Hey guys, in today's video, I want to show you one of the most straightforward solutions to cleaning up nasty shading in Blender. So this commonly is going to occur, especially on curved surfaces. And that's kind of the first example I want to demonstrate here, just to kind of make the whole idea intuitive to you. So let's say we have a cylinder. And let's say in this cylinder, we kind of cut in some sort of little, you know, detail like this. Almost immediately, I don't know how well you can see it with YouTube's compression, but if we go into matte cap here, you should be able to see it just fine. Um, you're going to see we have some pretty nasty shading streaks right here. And the reason this is occurring is because if we just quickly apply this Boolean right here, you're going to see that this face here, this face, this face and this face, these are all n-gons. You can kind of see they have more than four vertices per face. And when you have these n-gons on a curved surface, it's basically disrupting the natural flow of the curvature here. You're going to see these are all quads. If we alt-click here, you're going to see all these quads we have. And since these are all even, consistent, and they're all quads, the shading is going to be perfect on these areas, right? You don't see any problems. The only time we encounter problems is when we actually have these n-gons um, kind of disrupting the natural flow of the curvature here. And you're going to kind of see that um, gives you pretty bad shading results. So enough theory, let's discuss how we actually can go about fixing that. So I'm going to go ahead and undo this so that way I can access my cutter here. So generally what I like to do before I apply any sort of booleans in situations like this is I like to isolate the shading. Now the best way to do that is to, in this case, we drop a loop cut and we could put a loop cut right about here. Now what this is going to do, if I just apply the boolean to show you, is we're going to have a natural strip of even consistent quads here and the only area that's going to have problems are all pushed into this corner. So the only portion we're going to see any sort of shading issues is going to be over here because we've used this loop cut kind of see we've used that loop cut to push the shading into that um, little beveled area. You're going to see we still have some shading issues kind of up here as well. So generally what I like to do is I like to put these loops on both sides. So I'm going to put one loop here and then I'm going to put another loop right about here because this is technically where all of the shading is going to be occurring due to that curved area. So if we go ahead and apply the boolean now, you're going to see that pretty much all the shading has been pushed into this corner right here. It's not anywhere near as bad as it was before. And then generally in these cases, what I do, um, actually what you could do is you could even add additional loops here. But just to kind of show you, um, you're going to see that the only area with bad shading are these three faces here. So it's a lot more isolated. Now you can isolate this even more by adding in some additional loops into this area. And the reason you'd want to do this is because if you do that, you're going to see that now it's pretty much, um, these are all quads right here, right? And pretty much all the nasty shading is going to be even more isolated. So you can kind of add in additional loop cuts there to kind of isolate the shading even further. But generally at this point, what I'd usually do is kind of clean up these vertices. You could use something like the Boolean cleanup tool and mesh machine just to kind of merge those a little bit. And ultimately you're going to end up getting some pretty decent results. So the general idea here is the more dense your geometry is, the more the shading is going to be kind of pushed in. You can, for example, if I had a cylinder that was like a hundred vertices, for example, and I had a lot of loops in there to begin with, you're going to see we have a pretty dense cylinder. Let me rotate it. You see we have a pretty dense cylinder there. So now, if I just added the cut up front, I wouldn't really have to do too much work because it's already so dense, so the shading is going to be even more mitigated. And in this case, I wouldn't have to add in any loops because I already have a ton going this direction. You can kind of see the shading here is almost flawless, except for a little bit in that corner. So that's a really simple and easy way to mitigate your shading errors. I never bother trying to make it perfect. Um, the only times this would really matter is if you absolutely need a perfectly quad based mesh, um, perhaps for some strict guidelines, maybe VFX or something. But even in game assets, um, I'm trying to focus more on the shading 
and less on the topology. That's what actually matters. If you just do some simple triangulations at the end, it's going to work externally, no problem, at least for the software I use. Uh, Unreal Engine, Unity, Substance Painter, Marmoset, it would be no problem if you're working in any of those softwares. So what I always tell people is focus on the shading unless you have a specific reason to focus more on the topology. And even if you do, at that point it would probably be worth investing in an add-on like Quad Remesher because then you wouldn't have to stress about perfect topology up front. You just go in here, you can play with a quad count or whatever, and then get a perfectly quad-based mesh in the case you really needed one. So there's always different options for you there. It's a really simple video, but it's a very important concept because I see a lot of people with good models, but the shading's all over the place, and you want to make sure you mitigate that as much as possible, and you can do that by isolating the shading, and if you want to get a little bit more advanced, you could even hit it with quad remesher. Quad remesher is expensive, so I'm not going to really recommend it too much, but it's always a good idea to pick that add-on up if you want to make it even cleaner. You kind of see we have perfect quads here. You can make the results even better. Now there's plenty of more advanced concepts in this whole area. I could make so many different videos on this, but if you want to kind of get a whole comprehensive breakdown of different hard surface modeling workflows kind of like that, grab our hard surface ebook. It's in the description. It's completely free and it's a pretty good read even if you're a beginner or intermediate you'll learn a lot in there so that's it for today's video hope it provided you some value and hope it kind of made you understand a little bit more about shading and how to deal with it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video